37 seconds of logos, followed by 20 seconds of slowly reading a growth chart? This movie has no right to take up two hours and 20 minutes of your life, so it's signaling early that it couldn't give a flying roundhouse to the face about your time. Just get used to it. So he lost his first tooth on December 11th, 2002, but somehow grew a full goddamn inch in the three weeks prior to January 1st, 2003? I know kids, especially boys, grow fast, but not that f***ing fast. Oh Jesus, here's 2.5 inches of growth between April 03 and May 03. And my point is, this movie thinks male human boys grow roughly a centimeter an hour, and that is whack. Jesus Christ, movie. Heavy handed much? Literally 62 seconds into the film and you're doing this daddy died heartstrings bullshit. Also, what kind of parent makes their kids stand for a measurement to commemorate the death of their father? Sorry, honey, I know it's been a rough day, but you know the house rules. Now go stand against the door so we can cement in your growing psyche your father's tragic demise. Unless you think it was Dre himself who wrote this. In which case, here's another sin for thinking a grieving child doing this makes any more sense. Okay, what's worse, that he didn't post anything since daddy died, but now suddenly posts moving to China? The fact that I treated his growth wall like a Twitter feed by calling these posts? Or the fact that he wrote this in pencil? Or that he capitalized move but not China? Mama, it's yours. Come on, Dre, just take it. What's the backstory here? Did that board once belong to Dre, but this rain-soaked buddy wanted off him on a technicality after betting on something stupid like whether or not the word China is supposed to be capitalized? And then the board became a point of contention between them from that day on, jading their friendship until this day when the friend realized his friendship was more important than any old scape so he decided to make a grand gesture of platonic love by gifting the board back to Dre? Because I'd rather watch that movie than a Karate Kid remake. Also, that board isn't packed or anything, so unless he carries it on the plane with him, which I think they would stop him from doing, that board is getting broken half at 15,000 feet when the luggage shifts. God damn, this is some Bucky Steve Rogers level sh**. Friends. And now we know why he's moving to China, because they funded this movie. Ni hao mao. Xu shen muji mao. Dude. From Detroit. Detroit is not a real place. Also, I actually speak the same language you do, cliche. <laughs> a John Mayer song about honesty and deception in relationships is the perfect song for this scene, because that has no bearing on anything going on or our characters. Also, couldn't you have opened here? Song, movie title and credits, obviously not Chinese mother and son flying to obviously China. Do we need the last five minutes for any story reason? Oh look, they bubble wrapped his skateboard, and that somehow kept it from breaking. United breaks guitars, but Air China treats skateboards like priceless heirlooms. Mrs. Parker? Oh, uh, um, it's Parker. Oh, apologies, Mrs. Parker. Yeah. Welcome to Beijing. And that's the story of how Adeline Packer ended up stranded at the airport, wondering why her ride never showed. She was then forced to turn to a life of servitude at late night mahjong tournaments, turning tiles for enough money to scrape by in a hellhole she would never escape. Poor Adeline Packer. There's no nepotism like show nepotism. No nepotism, I know. It's better to say it's too much. As she gets out of the car at what I'm guessing is her new home, I can't help but point out that we've heard nearly three-fourths of this freaking John Mayer song in its entirety. You must be the new dude in 305. I'm Harry. Convenient age similar American is convenient. Look at you, making friends already. With the kid that speaks English and is clearly American. Good for you, son. You're really starting to embrace this whole move to China thing. Would kids in China really need their Robert the Sponge who wears the quadrilateral trousers, both dubbed and subtitled? Mom, I'm tired, okay? Have airplane lag. Hilarious kids speak, but I actually have setup lag. We're 10 minutes into this Karate Kid movie and I've gotten tons of kid and not even one f***ing whiff of karate. You at school tomorrow. You moved to China for your new job, but you did it literally the day before school starts there? Haha, -ha, because you expected the one thing, but we gave you the other thing. Ha ha ha. Also, I get that this is a joke because the original Miyagi was trying to catch a fly with chopsticks. But if Han was planning to swat this fly, why was he chopsticking at it to begin with? You made it. Welcome. Thanks. You play, right? That's racist. Sub, my shooting hand has got some jet lag, so you know just. Jaden is trying to channel his dad so hardcore here that I feel like by the end of this movie we could solve the whole nature versus nurture debate with the comparative analysis of the two. In China, public ping pong tables use rocks instead of nets because. Honestly, I can't even make up a reason why this would be necessary or preferable or even exist. Is this meant to illustrate poverty? Ingenuity? Is it really easier to last castle a bunch of rocks over here to build a wall than it is to find a few pieces of string and paper? Dude, you gonna talk to her or what? He is, and I wish the movie would quit trying to make me think he isn't. You should go talk to her. Unless you're scared. I'm not scared. It's hard enough to get great performances out of kids without giving them dialogue that feels like it was bought off the dollar menu at Taco Bell. What are you listening to? Bah. Bah. I listen to them all the time. They're tight. <sighs> Even this kid knows who f***ing Bach is, goddammit. Have you ever heard of this? In movies, all devices are at the ready to immediately play the exact song you were thinking in your head, even if it's 2010. Yeah! His spine survives this. You got beat twice now. Give up and go home. This is the kind of tin cup stubbornness you only find in movies. 
So this is supposed to be like the beach fight in the original then, right? And I'm supposed to be enjoying myself because it reminds me of a movie I loved? Cool. Just making sure I remember how nostalgia works since Hollywood gives me so few opportunities to have it forced down my throat. My mom says if you eat standing up, it gives you gas. <laughs> Sorry. Why do movies always turn the bullying up to 11? Is it possible we have a whole generation of bullies who don't even realize they're bullies? Because they've never gone so far as to knock someone's tray of hot noodles into their face? First she sends off Dre without lunch instead of the f***ing bully. Then the bully is allowed to shoulder thump him in full view of God and everyone, and the teacher does nothing. God, public schools suck everywhere. Okay, you're rushing it. We have to work this weekend. So we can add the overworked child perfectionist kid to the already existing fish out of water kid and the over the top rebel bully kid. If this movie has a popular and stuck up jock kid and a dark and brooding outcast kid, I'm calling Breakfast Club bingo. I never realized how tiny China was, but he keeps running into these guys everywhere. Are they cloned? <laughs> Man, this movie is a lot more beat for beat the original film than I was expecting. Creativity does not exist in this dojo, does it? No sensei! It's not karate, Mom! Tell that to your movie's title, bub. How's the peeping, Jackie? It took all of 20 seconds for these kids to go all hard day's night on the Forbidden City. Kids. While I can certainly appreciate Dre's desire to continue repping Motown sports franchises, by the looks of the rest of his class, shouldn't he be in a uniform today? I'm surprised he's not wearing a circular shower costume while getting even with these bullies. Han is going full Jacket Chan on these kids, and for a few brief seconds in this movie, I actually want to be watching this. Stranger danger much? I know Han just saved the day and all, but Dre getting shirtless and lying down while Han lights some sort of fire suction and healing seems like something they might have wanted to run past Mama Taraji first. That's not how fire works. Now cue the people sending me links to some weirdo science YouTuber putting chemically engineered whammo sauce on his hands and achieving a similar effect, and I do not care! This is not healing. You sing only with your eyes. So you are easy to fool. What's the word for when Jackie Chan is way more charming than Pat Morita in reality, but somehow less charming than Morita in a Karate Kid movie? Chandon Freuden? Deja Morita? Will you go with me? No, sorry. Guy says he won't do a thing, even though everyone knows he's going to do the thing. And honestly, this is one of the most annoying ways movies build fake tension. Deus Ex Postera? <laughs> Why would this idea satiate Chinese Kreese's bloodlust here? At first I wanted to see you or your student get jacked up before you leave, but now that you've mentioned a publicly regulated tournament in a distant future, everything's totally cool. Oh yeah, the skateboard. I almost forgot about that thing that was super important for a hot minute back in the beginning. It's China, Mom. Everybody knows Kung Fu. Super racist. Also, isn't it kind of weird that they're practicing Kung Fu in this movie and not karate? I guess Kung Fu Kid doesn't quite have the ring or nostalgic name recognition of Karate Kid, so I guess I'll go back to my petition to fix the pursuit of happiness. Marty McFly called. He's wondering if the audience is supposed to be impressed by this My Uncle Remy used to date this Brazilian girl, and he learned jujitsu. Tell me more of this, Uncle Remy, please. No, seriously, I'd rather watch a movie about crazy Uncle Remy than sit through the rest of this beat-for-beat -beat remake of a movie I already know by heart. Can you just tell me why I'm Take doing this? Off. Miyagi and Han share an annoying trait. They both think that they have to lie to the kid to train them. Like, by not saying doing these motions over and over will help you learn Kung Fu, Han is, I guess, just f***ing with Dre. What'd you learn? Nothing. And then we cut to him back at Hans doing the jacket shit again. If he truly thinks he's learning nothing, why does he keep going back? How is Dre not at least constantly asking why he continues to hang up the same jacket? Hey, Zwart, are you sure every single shot needs a fancy establishing movement? Of course! Nobody paid for a crane on that Agent Cody Banks movie I did, so you better believe I'm gonna use it here. We're both kind of practicing, you know, and... Skip! Shouldn't he be wearing a mask? I can literally see the dust flying off that car door into your mouth. Mr. Han, would you like to go with us? No, thank you. Too many people. Mr. Han, I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm with Han Stay Solo here. How dare you force him to go somewhere he's not comfortable? The man said no. Leave us introverts alone. Literally. Her mother does not approve of him, so she cuts a wide river in the sky. Not really narration, or reading, or even exposition, but it's just as boring and another complete waste of our time. So here's an extra ten sins for the Chinese paper puppetry shadow storytelling. They are definitely blocking the light here, and their pinky swear should be visible to everyone watching the shadow play. Especially since the movie's gonna have them kiss each other and block the light in a minute, and the audience will see that Ooh, Ew, cooties! Check it on. Firm. And another moment ruined, because we've seen this exact wax on, wax off realization before. Except this time, it's jacket on, jacket off. Which, now that I say out loud, I can only assume was written by Blink-182. Strong. Hanging up. These moves look nothing like the moves he was doing when he picked up or hung up his jacket. Not even Wakandans hang up their jacket with their arms crossed. Check it off! Um, no. He's work. I mean, this one's just a train shot. Do we really shut up and order the helicopter now? 
So you have a license and a car, and we're on a train. Please be quiet. This isn't dialogue. This is just B-roll of the two actors between takes. Chi, internal energy, it moves inside of us, flows through our bodies. AKA the Force. Man, Lucas really did crib a lot of Star Wars from Asian cultures. You're Yoda and I'm like, I'm like a Jedi. Holy sh the movie thinks it can just reference Star Wars and try to steal my joke making thunder. But movie was wrong because I got there first. In your face, movie. USA! USA! You know, I've seen him carrying that skateboard in about six scenes in this movie. He's ridden it in one. We journey to the top of the mountain. Drink from the dragon well. Uh, you got a little Kung Fu Panda in my Karate Kid remake. Looks like a few of these guys lost focus on their waterfall production chi. Yo, guy on the far right! It's Wingardium Leviosa. God. <sighs> it better be a... Awesome water slide down from this motherfucker. Are we there yet? Movie thinks the are we there yet joke still has some legs left to it, even after Ice Cube beat the hell out of it. And movie is wrong. Fun fact producers had to pay Jean Claude $3.7 million to use this shot because he has this damn move trademarked. This better be the tastiest fing water of all time, man, because I feel like you could have fully trained him in all of Kung Fu with the effort you both used climbing up this bitch. Let me guess, this Cobra Sky move is yet another paint by numbers replacement of the crane kick from the original. What's the point of doing a new movie if you're just swapping out pieces? You drink and nothing can defeat you. This is exactly what I say to myself every time I open another bottle of wine. Also, let's think about what's required to have a functioning fountain up here. We are at the very top of a hugely tall mountain, and that fountain is constantly bubbling up from below, against the laws of physics, meaning the dragon fountain is powered by electricity, or some kind of motor, making it way more modern than its reputation. Boom! I just canceled the dragon fountain. You're welcome, Twitter. Oh! Whoa! Anticipation. Do you have to teach this at the edge of a high-rise roof, though? Because I don't think you do. No one will be seated during the Jackie Chan beats up a child portion of the movie. Call me a cranky geezer, but not sure any 12-year-old needs to be this obsessed with muscles or their power poses. Not sure any 12-year-old should even have abs. Like, that feels genetically enhanced and wrong. I know I'm wrong, but it kind of looks like her violin case has wheels, and I'm suddenly picturing a premium Rush-style story detour where he skateboards and she uses her violin case as a skateboard, and they roll around town stopping evil flash mobs. I'd give good money if this violin case weren't waterproof, and later she got to her audition and pulled out a soggy-ass violin warped from water damage. That would be hilarious comeuppance for this ill-advised fountain jaunt. Ten things I hate about Zhao Dre. Um, is this appropriate? Somehow, the most prestigious music school ever gave her the wrong audition date until literally 20 minutes away from the real date and time. It's the screenwriter's fault, sure, but let's blame it on the school's office manager. <laughs> Playing Flight of the Bumblebee at any musical audition is like doing the Gettysburg Address at your intro to public speaking class. Of all the times to not be carrying your skateboard, his mom texts him that he needs to get home ASAP, which makes even me anxious, but instead he goes to Han's house. And thank God, because Han is suddenly drunk at destroying the car he's long been restoring, which leads to, you guessed it, another scene straight out of the original film. It was a steep hill. Lots of rain. The car just... Stop crying and get to the tournament. How the f*** did you bribe enough studio execs to release a two-hour, 20-minute cut of this film? That alone is more magical than anything you shot. Are we seriously doing another training montage? For three full minutes? This movie should have been over 10 minutes ago, and we aren't even to the tournament yet. Jackie Chan is fine in this film but mostly this movie makes me wish for a Karate Kid remake with balls, starring Donnie Yen and someone that is not Will Smith's son and is better at acting and karate, but mostly acting. He's doing the splits on a super high up fence corner on a roof because of that one scene from earlier, but still. And again, I believe this ability can be equally impressively displayed at ground level. Win or lose? Doesn't matter. Hans take the student into the arena before the fight to de-glorify the arena itself is straight out of Hoosiers, and I love it. Still sinning it for being all Hoosiers and shit, though. Wait, so this giant tournament has every match covered on a Jumbotron with graphics, points, and instant replays? Even in the first round? Or are they saying that just Dre's match is being covered? Either way, it makes no sense. Apologies in advance if I zone out here. The tournament part of this movie is even more like the film it's rebooting than any previous portion. Quick moves by the ref here, but at some point, wouldn't this nonsense get you disqualified? So let's do the fiery cup thing. As Han gets ready to Dr. Dre with his flaming cups, let me remind you one last time that this would never work ever, and that's no diggity. Okay, so I know the movie is playing this like it's a dirty move and all, but he did just get a point for it, right? So if it was legal, what's the issue here? Dre's the one who chose to come out here with a bum knee. Seems like a very cut and dried example of don't hate the player, hate the game, if you ask me. Really? Every single one of these bad apples just decided to do a complete about face? I haven't seen this much change of heart since I interned with that cardiac surgeon in the summer of 2007. Also, this movie is two hours and 20 minutes long! Beverly Hills. We always talked about living there, huh? You're rushing it. Were you rushing or were you dragging? We cast them for good luck. In my experience, there's no such thing as luck. 
China mom, everybody knows Kung Fu. Everybody was Kung Fu fighting. So the two of them may be together for a single night. What is this, some kind of one night stand? On the contrary, Nancy, I love you. I've always loved you.